Glad to have you on the show today. Thank you very much, CFA, for inviting me. All right. So, so, so let's start with the basics. What is virtual reality? Well, um, virtual reality is a, is a computer-generated 360-degree depiction of an environment or a reality. You know, by, by putting on a head-mounted display like this, which has lenses, the viewer can interact with virtual objects and environment can change things. Um, so it's a, it's a virtual environment completely computer generated and it has applications for different things, entertainment, training. So if you like, another way people like to see virtual reality is experience on demand. So you can create experiences and share experiences that would otherwise be impossible. So in a nutshell, that's what I think it is, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, but for, for, for um, just for letting people understand more, what is okay. the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality? Any difference? Yes, there, there's a difference. Um, there's a short answer and a long one. The short answer is virtual reality is totally computer generated. Just imagine yourself getting into a movie, like the movie Avatar. You are the Avatar, totally computer generated. Augmented reality is virtual put on top of real things. I'll give an example. Uh, in, in virtual reality, the, the environment and experience is entirely virtual. The user is immersed in a location that you can say doesn't exist in real life because it's computer generated. But in augmented reality, uh, a digital item like a phone, uh, sorry, a digital item like, um, if you like, an avatar, like a virtual item is overlaid onto a real environment. An example is a, a phenomenon that we all experienced some years ago. Remember the Pokemon Go? Eh? So where kids and adults were scoring all over the neighborhood looking for virtual objects. But they were finding these virtual objects in real environment. So you have your phone with a the camera. There's a virtual object there, but it's overlaid over a reality. Um, so that's augmented reality. That's augmented reality. Another example would be uh, something that Google is using now on Google Maps in some locations where you have uh, virtual depictions of a location embedded or overlaid rather on the real thing where you're moving along the street. Okay, so augmented reality is having as many applications also now as virtual reality. One thing that I like to say is that uh, virtual reality makes impossible things to be possible. It takes away the constraints of travel and mobility. You can reach many people. Let's focus a bit on education. Education, you can do impossible things. Virtual reality makes dangerous things safe. When we were doing chemistry in school, there were some reagents, some chemicals we were told were not to be mixed. Don't put water in HCL, don't put HCL in water. And then they will tell you, theory, if you do that, there will be an explosion. So you don't do it. But in VRO, you can do it. What's the worst thing that will happen? you restart the application, right? So in, in that sense, mistake in virtual reality, using virtual reality to teach, mistakes are cheap. Mistakes become learning opportunities. You can even think of biology experiments since we're still talking about education. I mean, nowadays people are concerned about the, the rights of animals that and at the end of a movie, you, you see things like no animal was killed in this movie. Well, in virtual reality, you can do dissection because the one aspect of education is the you know, I mean, a, a experiential education exemplified by experiments, touching things so that you can understand the, the, the theory. Take it beyond secondary school education, go to other types of learning. In virtual reality, you can use it to train surgeons, for example, people who have to develop different complicated skills. You can use it for simulation. It's been used for pilot training. You can use it to train the military, for example. So anything that requires simulation, you don't have to wait to get into the, the real thing. It's being used, for example, to train firefighters and so on. So entertainment, education, you, you, you name it, you name it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but let me ask you, do you think that the policy side is also important to catch up or it doesn't mean this should run and the policy should catch up later? You see, um, I mean, you are in the startup area. 
you, I'm sure you realize that if you wait for policy to catch up, you will not have done the things you have done. So that's one fantastic thing about the private sector individual initiative. I, I think you just ignore policy. Just ignore policy, do what you have to do because um, technology has democratized um, all of these things. The access to the technology, all you need is the knowledge of it. I mean, I've told you, for example, this cardboard with 2,000, 4,000, somebody can build it here. So nothing therefore differentiates us from the more developed countries. So ignore policy, keep doing what you have to do, and then policy will catch up, which is what it's doing, which is what is happening now, right? With the internet, the internet developed before policy caught up to start regulating, to start adopting. So yeah, I think we just go, we, 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 the world is not waiting, and we don't want to wait. <laughs> so, so in your opinion, yeah. Um, so in your in your opinion, looking at all other forms of new technologies, um, how big a bet are you placing on VR? On VR? Uh, I like I love my life, eh? so I would place. Eh? I would bet my life, but I would bet. <laughs> I would I would bet. I would bet everything. I would bet everything. Now and then, you don't even need somebody as um, as poor as me to say that the rich people are betting. But almost everything, but a lot on VR. Why? For instance, before even going further, one of the things I will come to your question eh, about how much I will bet. We talk about some other applications of VR that is very exciting. In medicine, not just in training, because of this immersive nature of VR, the ability to create new experiences, is being used, for instance, in psychotherapy, hmm? treating, for instance, soldiers who have returned from Boko Haram. By the way, this is one of my dreams. Eh? People, someone has to take care of our soldiers. Soldiers who have come back from battle and then many of them have post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> but what would you say to those who argue that one, it is expensive and two, there are risks around you know, um, the whole VR, VR technology? Right. To those that say it is expensive, I will show them the cardboard. I would introduce them to that young man in Badagri who is making his own cardboard to teach his primary school pupils on his own. I will show them that with 1,000 Naira and with a phone, that guy is giving them a virtual reality experience, taking them to places in other parts of the world through that arm that they would not have seen. Uh, about the safety, there are concerns, there are safety concerns, for instance, um, one of the things you want to avoid in using virtual reality is motion sickness. That used to be, there used to be a lot of motion sickness before, but VR is so refined now. So some content producers that realize that the movement, the different experiences, the so-called vestibular movement that can cause those disruptions, when they notice that they are advised that this particular one, you have to do it sitting, sitting down. So that has improved. You find makers like a HTC Vive or Oculus saying that the minimum age should be 13 years, okay? But also, VR has also developed the sense that when you are in a virtual reality environment, there's a so-called guardian that virtually it creates a boundary around you. I, I, want, I would like to see a greater deployment of VR in teaching. If VR will have this impact on character development, what effect might it have in learning behavior modifications in general? For example, I particularly want to see it deployed as a complementary learning resource in the trainings at the Lagos Business School. Interesting. Uh, congratulations again. Uh, we wish you all Thank the best. You, uh, I, I, I assure yeah. you that as soon as the um, lockdown eases out and the measures eases out, we'll certainly visit uh, to see what you. you're doing and it's also to support the progress. Yes. Thank you for being on the show today, Eugene. We Thank you, CFA. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Lester. All right. All right cheers, eh? My guest has been Eugene Ohu, senior lecturer at the Lagos Business School, who clearly believes that virtual reality technology can indeed transform a lot of sectors. I particularly like the fact that they are trying to teach children empathy and other skills using VR. If all goes well as a team plans, this will be a classic case of tech for good. One thing I can assure you is that we would follow the progress of the team in the days and months ahead and share with you, our viewers. We've come to the end of the show, but it doesn't end here. The conversation continues online. We are Tech Trends TV on social media. 
also watch the entire show on the channel's TV YouTube page or via cfablog.ng for tech trends. I'm Chukameka Agbata.